Hello, my name is Jörg Tahem. I'm on the internet known as MIG92, and I'm here with Laslus. Hi. <laughs> and we're going to talk about um, a joint project, um, which is consisting of two components that we will present, because you cannot take them in isolation. One is um, Disco, and the other one is Nixus Anywhere. Um, so what's the motivation for building these things? Um, so we work uh, with Numtite, um, and we install Nixus on a lot of machines. Um, when you have a range of customers, then um, you get like to at some point you have like went through all the providers that exist, and um, after some time it becomes like a bit tedious to like uh, adapt to every of these platforms, and also installing Nixus takes some time. Um, so in the beginning we were uploading install images to the various platforms, and each platform is a little bit different. Some of them don't even provide you this method. Um, so we were looking for something that um, allows us to install Nixus anywhere in a more uniform um, f fashion, and um, this is then what Nixus Anywhere became. So to give you a little bit of a background, uh, what steps you could throw uh, if you install Nixus. First, you need to boot into a Nixus installer, ideally. And this also depends highly on your target. Um, so for a virtual machine, you maybe have like a virtual machine image or something like that, or on bare metal. Uh, servers, you have something like PXE boot, or on a laptop, you put in a USB stick. Um, then you need to um, partition the, uh, fast, uh, the disks that you have, um, add some file systems, and then mount these to a location. And then um, you have to write some Nixus uh, configuration, or you copy it over from a previous uh, system, and then you run Nixus install, and then you reboot. So it's like five steps, takes a lot of time if you have to do it uh, at scale. Um, and also something that is maybe um, error genius if you like uh, do something slightly different and you do, didn't document it how you did it. Um, so let's take this and simplify this. And this is what we um, did with two projects. Uh, one is called um, Disco. In Disco, um, you specify your disk configuration in a declarative way, like we uh, love to do. Um, so your disk layout becomes uh, next, next code. Um, and then Nixus Anywhere is the second tool. It takes this uh, Nixus configuration that has your Disco uh, layout uh, configured. And then it has a single command um, that uses SSH to install Nixus. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Disco briefly. So what is Disco? Basically, it's like a NixOS module, which takes like a configuration with some strings, and it outputs two scripts. One is to format your disks, one is to mount them. And also some NixOS configuration to actually like configure the file systems and stuff, so your system actually boots, and also the rates. Yeah, it uses like some module magic, like uh, eval modules, like everybody knows. Best feature of NixOS. And so, yeah, one very often asked question is why don't we use systemd report? Because it has basically no features. You can just specify a single disk. You, can, you cannot do ZFS. You cannot do any LVM stuff uh, with multi disks. So, yeah, that's and, and, basically, and it's like very limited to appliances. And we, we, we love our ZFS. So we have it everywhere. So, if yeah, we don't have ZFS, ZFS, then we get set. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you don't have ZFS, yeah, nothing works. But uh, Repart has some cool features, which Disco doesn't have yet. So there's like disk image creation without a VM, so they do like cool stuff with this. Auto resize I still haven't implemented in Disco. And like con also populate files, like Disco is only for partitioning and mounting stuff, not population. So this is an example how Disco looks, basically. This is like just a partition table. Slow, so slow, slow. <laughs> slow, oops. Slow. <laughs> I can try to speak slower, but yeah. <laughs> So there's like, uh, this is like the disk here, there's like, can you see my mouse actually? Yeah, cool. Okay, so here's like the main disk. Uh, you can point it at some random device, like it should exist of course if you want to format it. And then you say it's like a, a GPT partition table in here. So uh, the device is only used during the initial creation of the partition table. Uh, later it's not going to be used anymore. If you use the, no the new GPT type, if you use the legacy table type, stuff will break. Don't use that anymore. So, so the, the background here is that you provide your device, uh, and then it will uh, put, when it creates a GPT uh, table, it will uh, make a label. So then when you have, for example, have two NVMEs, and you, they get swapped around for some random reason, then you might have uh, trying to mount the wrong one, so you want to have labels, and this is what this uh, GPT TF is doing. Basically, yeah. So yeah, uh, this is basically the advanced feature of that. So because it's like Nixos config, you can split it over multiple files. 
and this is basically what the uh, partition table would look like. So we have uh, like an IFI partition there for, with 500 megabytes with a fi uh, boot file system on there where you can also specify the mount point here. Then you have the, the root uh, partition, which is 100%, and the content is like an extended for file system. So yeah, that's very basic, I guess. I guess this everybody expects this how it should work in XOS. Yeah. The tricky part becomes then when you then have a set of us, for example, with multiple devices. Like yeah. you, have, you, you build your new uh, shiny nixos.org binary cache with like 25 uh, hard drives, and yeah. then things become a bit more, a bit more longer. Basically, yeah. ZF, uh, also, other cool features, ZFS with multiple devices. The examples are a bit too long to put them here. Rates with MDADM, LVM, Lux encryption, BcacheFS. You can also create disk images with Disco, which is quite nice. So if you have like a disk configuration with multiple disks, you actually get multiple uh, image files out of it. So you could maybe uh, create a ZFS rate from USB sticks and boot this. Yeah. Everything is possible. <laughs> so, yeah, like check out the examples folder in the Disco thing. This is actually a link if you would have the slide. They, they are my pet slides, so you can click on them later. Uh, yeah, basically these are all the cool features. Yeah, but what, what, are, what are the problems with Disco? So basically because the options are like recursive, you can have like a GPT partition table, a Lux partition in there, then like in a GPT partition table again. It's like hard to generate the documentation for this in like the way we do this now for modules because it's like all over the place. Also we use this weird type syntax, so everything is like polymorphic and everything can be like yeah. different types. Yeah, we were, yesterday we tried to ask uh, Robert Hensing because he's like a magician when it comes to the Nix uh, module system. And first of all, uh, first of it, you didn't believe that we built this type. So then that's got me like, yeah, we're still wondering how we can then generate documentation for this because just now you have to look at the examples, uh, but it would be nice to have something equivalent to the Nixos manual, to the reference manual if the, all the options to find. Yeah, and another problem is currently Disco only works by completely destroying your partition table first and then uh, reinstalling it. So something is like state transition I want to add to it. So basically it would check what your current setup would look like and only do the non-destructive stuff or like do it in a way that you keep your files. Yeah, we really don't try to like have a Windows installation already there and then you run Disco because it might be then no longer present. So it's, it takes, tries to take control over the disk. Um. <laughs> It could be a feature for some people, but for others not. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now we have had have our partitions uh, formatted, um, but this is still, still something where you, would you need to like um, go in manually. For example, there's a disco CLI where you could have the configuration on the system and then uh, run the formatting, uh, the partitioning, formatting, and mounting. Um, it's much nicer if you don't have to do that, and you can just from your laptop or set up your new laptop, for example, or some server. Um, so this is where Nixos Anywhere came in, into play. It's a bit like, um, just imagine like Nixos install has like a remote flag where you can specify a remote server. So this is what Nixos Anywhere is doing. Um, so you have your Nixos configuration with the disco configura uh, configuration in there uh, that we just saw. Uh, then you need some SSH destination. And then, yeah, if you run this command, it will um, start doing the Nixos installation. Uh, so how does this work internally? Um, so first we log on to the machine, then we do some checks. We, for example, check like what's our, the architecture there. Are we in the Nixo installer as, as installer maybe already or not? Um, because if you're not in the Nixos installer, then we do a trick called um, KXEC, which I will explain in a little bit. Um, but it allows us to load the Nixos installer into uh, the memory. Uh, then we run Disco. Uh, to do all the uh, partitioning things that you just saw, run Nixos install, and then reboot, and then it's done. Um, so back to KXEC. Um, it's a feature that's uh, already for quite a while in, in, in Linux, but maybe not everyone has used it so far. Um, but it basically allows you, if you have a Linux kernel running, uh, you can instruct this Linux kernel um, to take a new kernel and an init ID, and then just boot that. Um, so it's used for, for, example, for kernel development because you can quickly, without going through your um, uh, firmware, you can just boot into a new operating system because sometimes like firmwares, they take like 10 minutes to boot, uh, no kidding. Um, and um, we use this uh, to just uh, load our NixOS uh, installer into 
any Linux. Um, this has proven to be like really um, generic and nice because um, on every provider you get some sort of Ubuntu and they already put your SSH key in there, so you can just um, use this and as a starting base for your Unix OS configuration. Um, so what, this is what the usage looks like. You can use Nix Run if you don't want to install it yourself uh, on your system, so if you just want to run um, as a command, um, then you um, provide with the flake argument, you provide um, what Nix OS system to uh, install, and then you specify the host name. So it's as simple as that. Um, what we found that like, when you create a new disk configuration, sometimes you don't get it right the first time, and then if you have to reboot the machine, it takes a while, especially if you have a, not a, a great cloud provider that doesn't have like a really slow web interface or something like that. So it's much easier and nicer if you can just test locally. That's, that's why there's a VM test option. So what this does is um, it uh, simulates the whole installation in a, a NixOS VM test. And then you can um, see if it already works and it boots. It's maybe not uh, perfect for everything just now, but um, yeah, it often gives you like um, make sure that most of the stuff work. Another nice feature is um, uh, secret support. So often when you install, um, when you use uh, some of these uh, tools like uh, Arginix or um, Subsnix, uh, then you have this bootstrapping problem that you need first the key to decrypt all the other secrets onto the machine. And um, with Nixos Anywhere, you can also specify a flag where you sp just upload other keys. And then uh, you can get uh, all your other secret tool management uh, working. So next up, um, I just have a demo. I think it's way too small for uh, the people here in the room. Ooh, yeah. but, but what you see is that um, it, it runs the VM test. Um, so if you're already familiar with, the, yeah, you know, you see like a NixOS uh, VM testing this locally, but it could be also a server as well. Um, but you can see um, it won't take uh, that much time after all. So it's already done formatting. Um, uh, yeah, now it's already booting. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you get the slides later, you can uh, run this on your computer and you see uh, how it works, or you just uh, try, try it um, yourself. Yeah, so that's, that's done. <laughs> Pretty boring, which is good. Um, so, yeah, like I said, just now we use uh, SSH, uh, so we need uh, some machine and some other Linux that already exist. Sometimes it's not always true, like if you have like a bare metal server like we have in uh, the university, um, then uh, it's also nice if you can just um, use something like a PXE boot, which is like a, f a feature on your firmware that um, where the um, computer is asking for uh, op operating systems to boot. So I have for quite a while, I have like a branch where I, I implemented that, but I never um, um, merged it because I was still uh, uh, wanting to have some Nixos test um, working as well. So. Yeah, and this seems to be just now not a, not a working implementation of that, um, because you can also ask when you have chemo, you can also, there's also a PXE boot feature in there, and this is what I could use for testing. Um, and what be, would be also nice is um, just now you need um, to generate at some point the hardware configuration of your target system. For example, you need sometimes some special modules so your drives get recognized. And just now this is also manually and it would be nice if you could have something where it tries to generate this hardware configuration, copy it somehow back and then use that to install the system. So that would be something nice to have in the future. Let's see. Yeah, to summarize uh, what we talked about today, we had of Disco that you used to configure this. And we talked about Nixus Anywhere um, to install your uh, Nixus with that. Um, so the project pages are uh, as the following to Disco's so Nix community. Num um, Nixus Anywhere, we are still in NumTight. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it yeah. If you've got any questions, uh, time is now. Thanks for the talk. Uh, I have a question about Disco. Uh, I find it one of the most annoying things what, when, what you do when you partition your disks is making sure that your partitions are properly aligned. Uh, like it's a thing that you can 
occasionally stumble on, especially if you're doing ZFS, like if it's slightly misaligned, you get all kinds of performance issues, especially on SSDs. Does this do any kind of specific magic to make sure that your partitions are aligned or at least warn you that you're doing something very stupid? No, <laughs> but that could be a feature. <laughs> I mean, just now you specify the sizes of each partition. Yeah, yeah right now you basically like uh, mo uh, specify what SG disk sh should run, and if there's an SG disk parameter to do this automatically or warn you, then it would do this. Yeah, I think usually if you use like uh, common sizes like one gigabyte or something like that, um, then it's already sort of aligned. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but I'm not sure. Huh? huh? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, we we could check that, but it's like. Yeah, something we had to implement. I guess. Yeah, the thing is that sometimes there's actually use cases for that. I, I know that uh, some ARM boards, if they want uh, their bootloader at really, really odd uh, locations, and then you need some alignment. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe open an issue, and I will think about it. <laughs> oh, I, I will open the issue. Uh, I'm all the way back here. Okay. Hi, great talk. Thank you. Um, I have a question. So, from I understand, it, this works in an online environment. So, both machines have access to the internet. I'm wondering if there is a method to install Nexus if the machine B, the target, doesn't have internet access. So, sort of prepare the install on machine A, ship it, and install it on the machine B. Um, so, if I mean, we, we can support it offline because we have a Nexus test that also doesn't have internet. Um, so you would need the next first closure already on the target from where you start the installation, and then uh, the machine that you no no, no from, from where you start in, yeah from where you start the installation and the target you install to it doesn't need to have any internet access. Indeed, when I when I use the PXE boot, I never actually get got uh, configured any um, public internet on that. It would just copy everything from the installing machine over. Um, so there's nothing special needed. If you have internet, it's maybe faster if the machine uh, can use the binary cache to download something from you, uh, from the binary cache rather than uh, you having to upload everything. But this is something that is automatically set. Now I'm literally all the way in the front. Yeah, thank you for your talk. I've uh, already used Disco and enjoyed it a great deal. Um, I'm wondering if you, if you have any ideas on how Nixos Anywhere could support systems that have very little RAM, uh, which can be an issue for the sometimes quite sizable init RAM FSs that are used for KXEC sort of stuff. Yeah, so yeah, so KXEC um, needs to load the whole install into memory, uh, which is a tough call if you only have one gigabyte of RAM, um, because uh, NixOS has some size uh, due to various reasons. Um, so the current recommendation is either you find a way to actually boot the Nixos installer, because if it detects the Nixos installer, it will, will not try to KX it, it will just continue its installation, which is also nice if you KX, uh, if your installer failed, because you, the machine doesn't actually reboot, you can just like re retry. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, then there's also there was also another approach where we tried to like uh, someone tried to use um, a tool called Nixtabai. Yeah, as the installer image. So that was uh, an attempt to like reduce the Nixos installer, and it uses this uh, clever trick that um, we actually now use uh, System D and also in InitID. So it would not actually uh, switch to a Nixos, uh, a normal Nixos. It would just stay in this, and then use the smaller InitID, um, and that uh, also helps to like bring down it to like I don't know what the minimum size was. Like I think fifty, five, 50 megabytes. Yeah, like so that's that's then quite small. I think if you have a machine that is smaller than that, you maybe be worried about that all your Nixos workload might not work either anyway. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the tools, I really love them. Um, I know you had at a point a bit of Terraform configuration, but you never mentioned it here. Uh, and I thought it was a really cool integration uh, right. that makes Nixos anywhere spin up things really easily. But have you sort of given up on that or are you still using it? No, the, I actually just updated the Terraform module last week. I was adding a secret support to that. Um, yeah, I think it's like mainly I need to like, I, I mean, we already tried to document it, uh, everything quite well with like a quick start guide and even if you've not used Nixos that much uh, that you can get started using it. Uh, but the Terraform code, I, I haven't gotten around to like make a proper example. But it's indeed quite nice. Um, it's just like 
one module, if you know, if you're familiar with Terraform, um, where you can just pass in all the arguments that you will specify on the command line, you, you specify to the module, and then it will run Nixos anywhere and remember that. Um, and it's quite also nice if you just want to like uh, have a quick installation that you maybe kill later or so because you're just trying something out. Um, but so yeah, it will stay supported. Uh, we have uses of that, and yeah, not not, not going away. Okay. Hi. Um, is there a plan to support something like uh, using Disco on a running system? At the moment, it's for installing only. For example, for CFS uh, to deploy a kind of uh, data sets with special options or something like that, to have it in a declarative way on my system. Yeah, so Disco will configure your file systems and stuff, but it won't create new data sets right now, but that's on the agenda. So I want to like implement the state transitions. So if you have like, if your Disco config changes and the, up, the changes are non-destructive, like it would do those. But it's not done yet. It's like yeah, it's end of the year thing. <laughs> It's super hard to nice. have this problem because at the end, uh, this goes also just a uh, uh, shell script generator, sort of. Uh, so it's like the rest of Nix. Um, just, just, it's it's uh, just bash scripts, yeah, basically. <laughs> bash script templating. Yeah. The power of Nix. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Maybe here. You sure? <laughs> ah. What would it take to get it into NixOS as what? the default installer? Oh. 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 What would it take to get it into NixOS as a default installer? As a default first, we had to merge Disco, I guess. <laughs> yeah, getting the, yeah, we would first need to get Disco into it because uh, you are, you, you're making this part of a NixOS configuration, and you have like a NixOS module where it learns about uh, the Disco options. Um, I think Nix is anywhere I could package actually that's even be independently of that. Uh, it's just a long shell script. Yeah. <laughs> it would be not even a particular complex package. I don't know why I've not done it yet. <laughs> yeah. First one gonna continue. You said you already have um luck support in Disco. Um, is it like full support for all the options or just basic support? Could I like, for example, use a YubiKey to unlock my disk and... Yeah, you can like define all the NixOS options in there. So whatever NixOS supports for okay. that. Also there's, there's also like extra format arcs which gets passed to the command line. So you can do whatever you want, but you can also shoot yourself in the foot. So Perfect. Yeah. You, can, <laughs> you, also, you, also have, you also have before and after hooks, so you can even inject your own shell script code into that if you need something really, really special. I don't know even. Yeah. Uh, hello, thanks for the talk. Um, to react back on adding this code to NixOS, we have a report module in NixOS in the next release that you can use. Uh, we added that. But it would be nice if we could collaborate, maybe making a uniform module interface that they use the same options. All right. And then people can choose whatever they want. Okay. Yeah, but okay. the question is, does Report actually support everything we have? Because no. otherwise, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a subset of what you support, I think. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we, uh, if, if like Report only does the stuff, or if you do in Disco only the stuff that Report uh, supports, we could like generate a Report config out of it, I guess. But it's hard like to detect what what if you have a feature that Report doesn't support. But it's also on the agenda, not very high priority because it works right now, but yeah. Um, it seems you're in favor of ZFS. Did you also try ButterFS? ButterFS? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. I use this on my root partition. Yeah. You use that? Yeah, I use it everywhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're a brave yeah, man. You. Yeah, I'm a brave man. <laughs> 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 I 
I he does. I actually, <laughs> actually, I actually, uh, there's a funny thing here. So Laszlo's is like somehow got uh, hosts hosts like uh, the pad for like a lot of uh, people in the Nix community for like meeting notes and stuff. And it was only like last week when I actually wrote him a backup module so the database would get backed up. <laughs> so now the data is safe. <laughs> yeah, whoever uses my pad like knows I don't have any backups. <laughs> you know you have. Yeah, now I have. <laughs> and I monitor them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but no, there's, uh, be, yeah, there's better for support. There's also supports for creating subvolumes, as far as I remember. BKFS support? No, BKFS, no, for better. What uh, is what? Oh, what's the question yeah. about better or BKFS? Yeah, it was better FS. Or was it? yeah, for better FS, we support also subvolumes. Yeah, subvolume so snapshots? Snapshots and stuff, yeah. yeah. And huh? No. I don't think I don't think RAID 5 works in uh, better FS in the first place, so maybe we should actually. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it's not a file. It can also then just store the memory and hope yeah. for the best. But the ButterFS only works with one single disk right now. It's like no no multi disk type, so because yeah. no one no one I know uses that. Yeah, you shouldn't. I think. Yeah, but, but we could allow it. Like, other, uh, if you don't allow it. <laughs> No, no, I'm a, I'm a best script developer. It's oh, yeah, okay. Same, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> um, any more questions? I have a question. Uh, did you guys like arrange that the speakers would speak faster so you guys can ask more questions so that I have to distribute more pogs? Yes, <laughs> yes that's the case. Okay. I walk around. But that's good. That's for your fitness. I wanted to start by saying thank you for the awesome tool talk and also the weekly merge meetings you guys hold. You might recognize my voice. Um, I was wondering, of course, you have real life considerations outside of just Nick's interests. What would be a somewhat expected time scale for more ZFS features and the uh, disk of not having to recreate the disk from scratch every time? <laughs> So anyway, I think we, we got like a, a thread for ZFS where people like propose what things yeah, yeah. you need to add. Uh, like ZFS has, has like an issue where people where like talked yeah. about the schema we want to define. Like we just have to implement it now. Is the schema already now? Yeah, I think it is, but yeah. people, uh, people should take a look. Do we use advanced ZFS features? Yeah. So, so they said for ZFS, there's like a thread where you can see what option, uh, what uh, what people want to have, and if we have the next configuration, then uh, let's just make it a shell script somehow. And yeah, and for the other thing, was was incremental stuff? I oh don't yeah, know. Incremental stuff. Yeah, I, I have some. There's also an issue about that where I talked about the ideas. So it would be like a check phase where you like check the current state and do the stuff if that's like okay to do without destroying anything. I haven't put deep thought into it yet. Hmm? Hmm? Hi. Ah. So um, if you configure your disk labels with the disco, is there any integration with the NixOS configuration to make sure that the disk labels you configure for the file systems match up with what you've configured in disco? Yes, if you use the new GPT table type, it also, it also generates are, are labels also for you already. Are we talking about the like file system labels as well? well but uh, if we it's, like, it's like part labels. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So actually, we in GPT we, we use uh, a feature of GPT of the and put the labels there, and there's also file system labels. Yeah, but we don't use that. We you just don't use, use part that. labels no. because yeah, like it's more uniform. Yeah, then we don't need to check for the file systems. So it's was easier to implement. It's the second time I had to go back to get more parks. So yeah, you can you can uh, work off the calories from drinking all the club mate? Oh, that that's good. <laughs> I don't mind that. Uh, hi. So, in general, installing NixOS on anything but not x86, so like onto ARM boards, especially if NixOS install, if one decides to mount the SD card onto the main computer and then try to use WinFMT, breaks almost every single time. Uh, so with NixOS anywhere, because you mentioned disk images, does that work nicely from an x86 machine creating a disk image for a ARM machine? And then putting that on the SDK. I haven't tested it yet. <laughs> I think 
And well, I guess either you have like native cross compilation with binfmt, with, or with, or you use the binfmt trick. What I think binfmt might be actually fine because you're only copying stuff. Uh, yeah, if you have a binary cache, yeah. Yeah, but do we do we expose all the options that you need to like uh, change? Uh, uh, I haven't tested this yet. <laughs> I have a Raspberry Pi, uh, a Pi on my desktop. So, so clear, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I have the experience that NixOS install really likes... because. So you have to put binfmt, if I remember correctly, in slash run, and then NixOS install likes to just kind of clean slash run up and break binfmt halfway. Uh, so it's... So Something I've experienced. So, so, so currently, I think currently it uh, spawns a virtual machine anyway for creating the disk. Yes. Yes. So I think the best way would be if we would just like make sure we actually uh, like uh, if you if you are doing a cross build that we uh, then spin uh, ARM64 Linux. So I think it's not. I don't think it works quite well yet just now. Yeah, probably not. But we we, we should check that. Yeah. I think it's feasible. It's not like out of. The, yeah. But something. Like Don't just a little bit shell script is missing, probably. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I guess. Anyone else? We still have time. <laughs> All right. Yep. To fill up this time, um, is it possible to uh, for the uh, CFS fanboys? Uh, um, to start, uh, or to have two disk, a mirrored disk, uh, and booting it without grub with something like system dboot and have an encrypted CFS. That should be possible, yeah. Yeah, I set this up uh, just recently. Like, um, uh, the, the problem is the boot partition, because you need the AVI partition, and you would either put this in the, into an AD, AD, MD, ADM rate, with metadata 1.0, so you can... Yeah, but, then but, but then systemd boot doesn't work because it doesn't like to install to this. Yeah, so the, the hard part is actually convincing systemd boot if you have a RAID system to like actually, like, uh, you cannot really install it like to like two po uh, boot uh, partitions. It doesn't like if you have two boot partitions yeah, like on different disks. It doesn't like if like the boot partition is like on a RAID because it says it's not a real file system. Yeah, <laughs> as also this and crap works with that. So you, I would say crap is currently the better option for this setup. Uh, so I'm actually using the mirror boot option. Uh, for that crap has, and I think there was someone that tried to implement it for system D boot as well. Yeah, right. To said we should use this magic parameter. But this magic parameter also didn't work. It didn't work? Oh, no, no, the other, the other magic parameter. <laughs> I tried both, it didn't both, work. Both didn't work? Okay, so right or lie. So system, yeah, just, you can tell system D did fuck off and tr try to install it anyway, but it, didn't, it, it wouldn't do it. Uh, so like it has some checks and it's really picky about you have to follow the EFI spec. You only have like one EFI partition on the whole uh, system and it doesn't like multi disk and stuff. Um, but, but I guess you can have multiple boot partitions or something. Yeah, there, there's, yeah. there's, there's uh, I think there was a, a Nix package request, but this needs to be merged first because uh, then, uh, but so it's not really a feature of Disco, it's a feature of uh, NixOS to have the bootloader uh, being installed into this at the same time. So that's the ideal thing, I think. Yeah, you're right, because this uh, option is missing at the moment. Yeah. To yeah. have a uh, system deboot on mirrored disk or yeah. multiple disks. Yeah, that's basically a feature which is missing. Basically. Okay. But, we, but we, it's we, coming. we didn't fix that yet. Yeah, yeah. Winter <laughs> yeah, we, we, is we coming. Just, we, just, we just gave up on your scrub again, in this case. Anyone else? No? Let's give it up for the speakers. MIG-92 and Lasselis.